everyone, welcome to the Zonta Club of Santa Clarita Valley Life Forwards Workshop, Single Parenting Success. It takes a village and a whole more, a whole lot more. We have a panel presentation today by Dr. Sharice Moore, Stephanie Montoya from Single Mothers Outreach. She's the program director and our panelists, Diana Moreno and Jessica Delazari. I am Beth Heiserman, president of the Zonta Club of the Santa Clarita Valley. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat. And when we get to the question and answer, we will be able to help you. We have privacy settings today, so feel free to click on the stop video to disable your camera. This presentation is recorded live on Facebook and then will be uploaded to our website. Feel free to, wel uh, feel free to share this with your friends and family. We are requesting that everyone remain muted. It will only record the host. There is also a survey at the end of our presentation. Please help us out by filling it out. We would love to hear from you by telling us what topics you're interested in. We wanna encourage you to share your opinions with us. It should only take about two minutes. We have seven questions and all answers come back to us anonymously. Thanks so much. And now I present Phyllis Walker, Chair of our Life Forward Committee. Good morning, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this exciting workshop about the challenges that single parents face. Dr. Sharice Moore, Stephanie Montoya, Jessica Delazari, and Diana Moreno will be sharing with you. And now I would like to introduce our speakers. The facilitating the workshop will be Dr. Sharice Moore and Stephanie Montoya. Sharice is a principal researcher at American Institutes for Research, president, president of the William S. Un Union High School District Board of Trustees and member of Zanta. With over 30 years as an educator and community and family advocate, and building on her own experience as a single parent, Dr. Moore will engage the panel in a thoughtful discussion designed to support single parents to success. Stephanie is, as mentioned, is the program director for Single Mothers Outreach. She feels rewarded to have experience working with youth and families. She is currently pursuing her master degree in social work as California at California University, University in Northridge. As a single mother, she feels rewarded to be a part of Single Mothers Outreach. Our panelists uh, include Jessica Delazari and Diana Marino. Jessica is a single mother of two. She's a graduate from College of the Canyons and is a, attending California State University Bakersfield as a sociology major. Rising from homeless, homelessness and a domestic violence survivor, her daughters and their future kept her motivated. A life change was necessary and she never looked back, staying in, dis in college despite many challenges. Jessica's mission is to advocate for all women and their right to resources for a higher education. Her goal is to obtain a master's degree and help underprivileged families in the community. Her motto, you can do it, you got this. Diana is a single parent of a four-year-old. She's a junior at California State University Northridge working to attain her bachelor's degree in communications. She graduated from College of the Canyons in 2020 with three bachelor's degree, wow. Sociology, communications and liberal arts studies. Diana is a part of the board of directors with Bridge to Home, is a LinkedIn ambassador and was featured in the Santa Clarita local newspaper, The Signal empowering other single parents doing COVID-19. So the stage is yours, uh, panel and so Thank you, Phyllis. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Good morning, everyone. We are delighted to be here with you today. I'm going to get my screen up so that we can start sharing. 
and get going on our panel. So just help us out a little bit. We wanna just make sure everybody's feeling good and remembering some of the things that they enjoy during their childhood. So this is our opening chat to welcome you. What was your favorite thing to do as a child? Please go ahead and take a moment and type that into the chat for us. Mm, some great things. Thank you so much for sharing. You know, we wanted to start with this because we know that as single parents, it's a journey. And a part of the journey is remembering the things that you as a child enjoyed and found to be some of your favorite things. And as you look at this bridge here, this journey that you see on, on this screen, we wanted you to remember how you and your role are also making sure that your child has those memories as well. So we're going to be talking a bit about single parenting success, as you've heard, and we all know it does take a village to raise a child, and it takes a bit more when you're a single parent. So as Phyllis shared, my name is Dr. Sharice Moore and I am currently the board president for the William S. Hart Union High School District. And I'm also the co-chair for the City of Santa Clarita's Human Relations Roundtable. And I am a very proud member of the Zonta Club of Santa Clarita Valley. And I'm a member also of this committee. So for those of you who are return members, you see me and have seen me with right alongside Phyllis for probably the last decade or so working on the Life Board Committee. I've worked on this committee for many personal motives that folks might not have known, but I see Life Board as a way of serving and supporting moms because as you heard, 25 years ago, I began my journey as a single mom. And I know personally the struggles of being a single parent and Life For It provides a support system and a network that I wish I had had. I'm delighted to get to co-facilitate today's conversation with Stephanie Montoya. Stephanie, if you wanna take a few moments and introduce yourself. Sure, thank you so much, Sharice. I am super privileged to be here today. Um, as Phyllis mentioned earlier, I am the program director of Single Mothers Outreach. I just transitioned as a new program director la last year. Um, so I feel super, super honored to be a part of an amazing organization where we empower um, single mothers and their children by providing them hope and resources so that they could become self-sustaining. And it is a privilege for me to be able to um, be a part of this community. Um, as a single mother myself, um, I was also a teen, a teen mother. So um, I have overcome a lot of challenges and um, I am super proud to be where I am here today. Wonderful, wonderful. And we are thrilled to also have you here from two amazing women, our panelists, two amazing single moms who you will get to meet and learn a great deal about more later in the presentation, Diana Moreno and Jessica De Lazari. They are going to be sharing their experiences that we hope will help you understand some of the whole lot more when we talk about It Takes a Village. So we're going to have a few components of the presentation today. We're going to start with an icebreaker. Then we're going to go over some of the top tips for single parenting success. And then we will spend the bulk of our time on our panel discussion with Diana and Jessica responding to some questions that they were provided and then answering questions that you may have as the attendees here during the webinar. And then we hope that 
following that information and the tips that we can get you started on a plan for single parenting success by having a call to action as we wrap up the day. We have a few goals and I wanna go over those with you. Um, we hope that by the end of this, you will have some successful strategies for single parenting success, that you will get to engage with other parents in a judge-free zone. And we really wanna set the tone here, make sure that everyone knows this is like our Las Vegas. So what is shared here, there's no judgment. This is a this is a comfortable, safe zone, and we are each other's network and support and resource. So we want to make sure that everybody agrees to these goals and norms that we have. We're also going to discuss discipline and dating tips. We're going to help you begin to think about how to find a support system to help you through some of the challenges of single parenting and then having this call to action. This is about real talk. This topic isn't one that is easy to talk about. It can be emotional and that's okay too. We want you to be where you are and who you are in the moment that we have together and use this as an opportunity to to grow and learn how to be in the place where you wanna be if you aren't there yet as a single parent. All right, so with that, I do wanna know where you are. And so what you'll see here, this is called a feelings meter. And what I want you to do is to look on this meter and find a word or maybe two words that represent how you're feeling right now, right at this very moment. And then I'm going to invite you to use a tool that's called Annotate. And Beth is gonna show us how to get there, but it's an easy tool that ends up working like a pen and you just circle the word that you found. So find your word or your two words and then Beth, if you could explain how you Absolutely. annotate. So at the very top of your screen, it's going to say in green, you are viewing Sharice Moore's screen. To the right of it, it says view options in gray. You're going to click on view options, and then you're going to see where it says annotate. You're going to click on that, and then you're going to be able to see where it says mouse, text, draw. You don't have to worry about anything. You just start whatever you would like to go to and I could be the first person, I'm going to say. I'm seeing that the annotation is happening. Yes, it is. Before I even was still reading where to go. <laughs> great, great. I'm trying to think where I am. Oh, here I am. <laughs> How are you feeling? Circle how you're feeling. Take a moment, look at those words, use the annotate feature. Okay. Okay. So I see most people as they are doing this are, I'm seeing a lot in the yellow area, which is all related to happy words. And, and that's great. That is wonderful. But I'm also seeing some who are in the orange area, a little fearful, a little nervous, um, a little overwhelmed. And we know that that is often a place that we've been at especially during this pandemic time, it's been overwhelming to say the least. Some are, are a little sad and, and you'll see on this wheel, if you look at it, the happy area is one little slice, but you'll see sad, disgusted, angry, fearful, bad, surprise, taking up a great deal more of this feelings meter. And what my mom told me 
is that we want to always concentrate our happiness and spread out the other negative feelings that can come into our lives. So that's why you'll see this is spread out that way. But wherever you are, that is a perfect place to be in because you need to be in the moment. You need to be mindful and know what you're feeling and how you are feeling right now so that you can decide and make a decision as to how you want to be all in for what we are going to be sharing for the next hour with you. So I invite you to take your feelings, acknowledge them, and then make a decision for how you're going to use this next hour that we have together to get to where you want to be. All right. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to go ahead and clear this. I hope you enjoyed that, learned something new that you can do using Zoom. There are lots of great features there. And I'm going to turn it over now to Stephanie, who's going to <clears throat> some icebreaker pieces further with us. Stephanie. Thank you everyone for participating. Um, and we decided to do an icebreaker so we could interact with one another and just kind of see um, you know, our audience and get to know our audience. So um, I will appreciate your participation and please feel free if you are not comfortable with participating, that is also okay. Um, so we will have um, poll questions coming right up. If you could please answer those questions. Um, our first question is, are you a single parent? Yes or no? And Beth, I think we have a critical mass. Thank you. All right. And um, the second question. And thank you so much everyone for answering these questions. We super appreciate your support and your participation. And um, our next question, what are you expecting from this workshop? And you could put your answers um, right below in the chat box. And I'm seeing some amazing um, answers in the chat box. Thank you so much.
Um, if you could please also um, in the chat box, just write what's your favorite thing about being a single parent? Of course, if you are a single parent. Um, and then, Beth, do we have, I believe, um, one last question? We do. Please. Thank you. And what's most challenging for you about being a single parent? And thank you for being extremely you know, vulnerable and transparent with us in the chat box. Um, I super appreciate everyone's responses. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for helping us get to know our audience a little bit more. I know our panelists will benefit greatly from that. I was taking notes as they, the polls were going and we know that um, of our group, most, the, the high, the average 50% have two kids um, and marital status, the majority are divorced, 47%, 24% uh, are single and some widowed and separated. And with what you're expecting from this workshop and you can keep typing your answers and thoughts into the chat because it helps us to know how to shape the responses, especially it will help our panelists in terms of sharing their experiences and Stephanie's expertise working through single mothers outreach and responding to making sure that this workshop meets your needs. I did see that there is some desire for guidance and support and tools and resources. I do hope that this next section will help you with finding some tips that will help you think about how, how, to, how to move forward and how to be successful as a single parent. And we'll go into those now, but before we do just want to make sure we all know that there are some pieces in, in our country around single parenting that maybe folks don't know and they make assumptions. 25%, um, 27% of children under the 18 are living with a single parent. That's, that's one in four. So if you look in your child's classroom and you count one, two, three, four, one will be being raised by a single parent and you keep doing that. And so that lets you know, my son 
is in a class of 36, there are likely at least nine single parents in that room who might not have had the opportunity to talk to each other or understand that they are in similar situations trying to be the best parents that they can be. And here's something else that folks might not have known. Um, while single moms make up the great majority of single parents, we have over 2.6 million single dads in the United States. And I, for the first eight years of my daughter's life was a single mom and I married my husband who was a single dad. And so we both really were able to work together to support each other, understanding what, it, what it's like to be a single parent. Um, there's also a misconception that if you grow up in a single parent home, your children aren't gonna be as successful as children living in two parent homes. And we know that absolutely that is not true. In fact, the determining factor of growing up to be successful is really the stability that is in the household, not that there are two parents, because we know in many two parent homes, they are not happy homes and there's instability in daily activities that are occurring. So again, some things that we need to recognize that we're not alone and that sometimes the assumptions that folks make are inaccurate. Single parents really have a goal of raising happy, healthy children. And for that to happen, we can do that through focusing on some of these tips that we are about to share. So I'm gonna go over 15 tips for single parenting success. And if you have a pen and paper by you, it would be great if you want to take some notes, this would be a good time to do that. And we will have an opportunity as we go through these to have you continue engaging and sharing with us things that you are finding beneficial from these tips that will be shared. So I will start with the first five and they're not in any particular order, but they're in an order that from my experience became important to me. They might not be that level of priority based on your experience as a single parent, but the 15 tips will work to help you throughout. Here it talks about creating a support network for yourself. And here we know that it's essential to spend time with other adults. This might mean other single parents, but it could mean other parents who aren't single parents too. And it could be your family and friends who become your network. As I said, it's one in four in our child's classrooms, if you count out who that is, you will, be, you will be surprised to find the number of single parents who exist. And if you, through the school or through other extracurricular activities, figure out how to connect with those single parents, I think you'll find that there are ways in which you can start to build a network. This is a network too, so know that if this is the first step in creating a support network, you have a network right here as well. But also don't be shy about mixing and mingling with other parents, even if your children don't necessarily share the same interests. You wanna build a community of families of all different types. So not just a community of single other single parents. Rather, you wanna look for for parents whose kids might share some things in common with yours. You can join different play groups, get involved in your church or other extracurricular activities that your kids might like. But the big goal here is to have a community that represents a variety of people and families that will bring diversity and excitement to your life because this support network is for you again, with the goal of spending time with other adults. We saw as we were doing the feelings meter that we have some feelings that are real, you know, some feelings that represent fear, anxiety, 
um, frustration, overwhelmingness. The focus here is to try to choose to stay positive. Uh, it's not necessarily always easy to do that, but you will find that it benefits you and your children when you can let go of baggage and focus on the positive. This means that you might have to really look and do some mindfulness focus pieces, changing your perspective, recognizing that some situations may be difficult, but try to make sure that your kids don't see that because it will impact their attitude if you are expressing some of those challenges where they can see it and observe it. So things to think about, having a good sense of humor, not being afraid to be silly with your kids, that's important. Um, smiling, laughing, hugging as often as you can. Showing them that you're happy to see them first thing in the morning and right before they go to bed at night, just to make sure that your whole day is covered with this opportunity. When the responsibilities of parenthood can be overwhelming, try to stay focused on the positive things in your life. As you shared earlier, remember back to that one thing that you really enjoy most about being a single parent. This is important and you should give yourself a pat on the back right now because being here in this workshop is a part of focusing on self-care. And so you want to make your health a priority. You want to, before anyone else, take care of your own needs. You can't pour into others from an empty glass. I, I always say that if your glass is empty, you can't pour into others. So stay active. Well, when we're done with this session today, go outside and take a walk. Walk and walk with your kids, invite them to be involved in that, that opportunity to stay healthy and active with you. Just take time for yourself. I know it's tiring. We've all been there. It's exhausting. You're trying to do everything and you, you have to get to the place where you recognize that you don't have to do everything and you can't do everything. And in focusing on some self-love and self-care, being well rested and healthy, it will help you again to be your very best for your children. So that's okay. You know, we, we tend to put our kids' needs first and ours last, but this becomes this never ending cycle of exhaustion. So, and, and feeling of inadequacy, feeling inadequate, but our kids are really depending on us to make sure that we're well equipped and able to handle the responsibilities of being their parents. So we have to focus on self care. Be a money mentor. This is really about being a role model with how you manage money and teaching that to our kids through what we are doing. And sometimes that means that, at least for me, there was this guilt that came along with being a single mom that I had to get everything for my child because it was just me raising her. But I recognize that that's not really helping her understand what you really need to do to, to manage money. So I would go without to try and make sure that she had whatever the current thing was that all the kids had, even if we couldn't afford it. The goal is to really focus on how you can track your spending, your savings, and ensure that your kids see that, that you're mentoring with them how to have a level of financial stability. Because as we saw earlier, it's that stability in the home that will determine the success of your kids. And if you are worrying about money, you're not gonna have the stability that you wanna have in your home. Enjoy quality time together. Here, this is really just try to focus on electronics, free time, um, making together time a priority, be interested, be present. We're busy. I, I've worked full time raising my kids from, you know, before they were born through today. And that means that 
I, it's not always easy to make that time for together time, but you have to, you have to try and focus on being present, being interested and making the very most of everyday moments that you have. That quality time you can't get back. And that time that you put into work, you're replaceable. So with your family, make, your, make them the priority. The quote that I have been sharing is, are you giving your work the best and your family the rest? You wanna flip that around to give your family the best and your work the rest. So Beth, this is the first five. And I would ask that as you look at these five, think about which one is the most important for you to focus on now where you are. And you can just pick the numbers one, two, three, four, or five, and Beth is gonna bring up the poll. And if the poll is in front of the five and you can't see them right now, the first one was create a support network. The next was stay positive. Three was focus on self-care. Four was be a money mentor. And five was enjoy quality time together. Let me give you a few more minutes to vote. I'm seeing not everybody has voted yet. So we'll give you a little bit more time and we'll close this out in probably about five seconds, but it's looking like most of you are seeing right now this need to focus on self-care and enjoying time together. Beth, you can go ahead. I think everyone who wanted to vote has voted. All right, so that focus on self-care. Okay, thank you for that. Um, we'll get to the next five. And here, this is looking at exposing your child to new experiences. Here, it's focus on thinking about taking your child out on different outings, things that you don't do every day. How can you find opportunities to expose them to, to new experiences, things that they haven't yet gotten exposure to. So it could be different museums, different outings. Here, we're so fortunate in Santa Cruz that we have beautiful trails and hiking areas, but we wanna take advantage of the opportunities to really let our children see that their world is bigger than just, in my case, it was just the two of us against the world. We want to make sure that they know the world is actually bigger than that. So exposing them to new experiences is very important for your success and theirs. Finding positive role models. Depending on if you're a single dad or a single mom, this means something different. But really the goal here is to find positive role models of the opposite sex so that your child will have a balance and perspectives of who they see their selves as being able to be. Think about who you look at as these models, make sure that you identify people who are trustworthy, willing to spend time with you and your kids. It could be uncles, aunts, um, coaches, but again, be careful in who you choose, be intentional, so that we know that this goal here is to make sure that whoever we choose as positive role models in our kids' life, that they will have a positive influence and can have a big impact on the path that they may choose in their future. Create a routine, stick to it. This is crucial, routines are crucial. This is especially true if you are a divorcee because the routines that you might've had when you were married and the routines that you create with your child as a single parent, they, they sometimes start to slip through the cracks. And so it's important that we have daily, weekly, monthly 
yearly routines to try and create that stability. That is the biggest factor in determining the success of our children is to have stability in the home. So with the exception of vacations and holidays, you want to make sure that it's it's that there's some semblance of routines and it gives your kids a sense of security because they know what to expect. The expectations are set and it gives them a sense of control over their life when they know what is going to happen. When things are chaotic and unpredictable, they when they see that, that is what becomes what they think is normal and we don't want them to think that that is the norm. It means that really things have to be consistent also in if we're co-parenting in the home of the co-parent too. So this is something that you wanna have a conversation with whoever you may be co-parenting with so they understand what your routines are and try and support you to the extent possible. Be affectionate and give praise. It is easy to be busy and easy to skip the praise and skip the affection because we are so busy doing everything as you shared in some of the chats. But engage with our kids as often as possible. Give them praise daily. Find something that you can praise them for daily. Encourage them, affirm them. Make sure that no matter how small it is, that they know that you're watching and that you're praising their efforts not just their achievements. And this is sometimes hard to do. You, you wanna praise the win, but we wanna praise the effort, even if it's not a win. And that will inspire them to keep working hard and to not give up when they know that we are giving them praise and affection on a daily basis. And then accept help and plan ahead for emergencies. This is hard to do. Many of us are very, very proud and many of us are very private. I, I've lived in Santa Clarita for going on 17 years. And when asked about why I wanted to help with this workshop, it's because my life is pretty private and people don't know me or much about me. And they had no idea that I was a single mom and had raised my daughter by myself. So understanding that we are proud, that we are proud parents, it's okay to ask for help. In fact, we need to plan for emergencies. We need to have a support network that will help us. We don't have to try and be super superheroes. We don't have to try and do it all by ourselves. There are people in our lives who want to help us and it's okay to ask them. And in fact, I'm going to ask you to accept help and plan for those emergencies because something could come up and you'll need to know where you can go and who you can go to. So this is a second 10. And so same thing as before, look at these six through 10 and select again where you are right now, which of those is an important one, the most important one that's standing out to you as something you need to work on and focus on or do differently. And again, six was exposing your child to new experiences, seven, finding positive role models, eight, creating a routine and sticking to it, nine, be affectionate and give praise, 10, accept help and plan ahead for emergencies. All right, this is good. I see more of you are voting and I'm seeing some pretty good spread. So these are all areas, but it's looking like we'll give you another five seconds. If you haven't voted, go ahead and vote now. All right, so Beth, if you wanna go ahead and share the results. So this looks like the two that stood out for this group is finding a positive role model or positive role models, plural, and accepting help and planning ahead for emergencies. That accepting help 
as you're circling these and finding the ones that stand out to you, that's what I'm going to ask you to put a star beside because that can make a big difference. All of them can, but that one from personal experience is very important to, to do. Okay, so we'll look at the last five of these 15 tips for single parenting success. And here we are with 11 being consistent with discipline and rules. And that was in the list of some, some of the areas that you wanted to talk about a little bit. You know, none of us have perfect kids and hey, guess what? None of us, of us are perfect parents either. Kids are gonna get into trouble, we got into trouble and that's a normal part of childhood. But at the same time, it's important to note that children do need to understand what's expected I know we have a question that we'll be answering later that came in about what do I do? And here's some things to think about, but we'll get more specifics as we hear from our panelists here shortly. Um, be consistent with the rules and discipline. If your child has multiple caretakers, it's going to be really important that they realize that certain rules that they can't be changed to, you know, by adult by adult. We want to make sure that we have conversations with others who are helping us with caretaking our kids to understand what our rules are and that we are the primary caretaker and we need their support to help us make sure that we are able to raise them successfully. Uh, we want to try to talk to whoever we might be co-parenting with again and get an agreed upon approach to discipline. We want to avoid empty threats. We want to keep our temper under control. It's easy when you're exhausted and tired to have a response that is quicker than we want to discipline and to be disciplined harshly. So focus on keeping our temper under control, but at the same time, we can't be a pushover. It should include an opportunity for learning when we are disciplining our kids. Children will behave better when the rules are consistent. When we're consistent, the rules don't keep changing. They will behave better. They want that stability. So stick to those rules for discipline as much as possible. And make sure that we're getting the balance right. There's, there's this parenting balance. And what that means is that sometimes we have to pick our battles. Not everything is a discipline moment and a discipline opportunity. So we have to decide when we're going to make those decisions about being strict with discipline or not being strict with discipline. Because let's say, for example, you have one of your kids draws on their sister's face with a marker. Um, you could discipline them and you could be pretty strict about that. And you could also say, you know what? The marker will wash off. Is this does this really matter? Is is it a big enough thing to discipline over, or is it one of those little things that I can let go? So you want to pick and choose what things are going to be places where you need to focus on discipline and what things you're going to let go of. And remember that there's times when you have to make those choices, but if you have clear rules at the onset and a set boundaries for your kids. They'll know what is safe for them to do. They'll know where, how far they can veer off. And our job as parents is to, to bring them back in. Uh, answer questions, honestly. It is a tough time. Even taking this hour and a half now to be with us is time away. And that adds to sometimes the stress that we have on all the things that we have to do. So, our kids might sometimes ask us what's going on, why are things different? When they ask us questions, be honest with them. Don't sugarcoat the situation. Don't give an answer that's not accurate or not true. But depending on their age, you wanna decide how you explain the truth of what's happening and your answers to their questions or the circumstances for where you are now. That will vary again, depending on the age. And 
it's also important to make sure that in answering questions, honestly, especially if they're about the other partner that you're co-parenting with possibly, that you don't talk badly about them. Even if that's hard to not do, that you resist that temptation and not focus on the negatives, but strive to be truthful and honest. And again, staying positive. And this will benefit them so much when we are answering questions honestly with their kids. At the same time, there are some conversations, this is 13, that focuses on that focus on adult conversations. And so we do have to know that our kids are still kids and we have to treat them like kids. So it's important for us to handle our feelings and grown up issues with other adults. You know, we can't have our kids feeling our stress because we're sad or we're angry or we're upset. It's, that's normal to experience and see in all homes, but we have to reassure when we're the single parent that our child understands that this isn't against them, things will get better, and that we are con consistently there for them. So if your child is older, you can again be honest with them about how you're feeling. You can say, you know, I had a really bad week today or day to day, or, you know, you're whoever did something that I'm put me in a not happy mood, but we want to express it in a way that it's our feelings and making sure that we aren't asking our kids to validate or become the other adults in the house. We want to keep grown up issues out of discussions with our kids to every extent possible. So the kids shouldn't have to feel our concerns about finances or our concerns about conflicts with the other parents that those things make them feel very anxious. And again, that goal is stability. And it's not saying that you can't have those feelings, but it's saying that you, with that network that we've built early on, wanna leverage that network to have these adult conversations, grown up issue conversations with, or call on other organizations that can help support us through. But treating kids like kids we can't rely on them for that adult level of conversation. And that's really, really important. 14 is date when and how it's good for you. So this is also one of the pieces that we will hear a little bit on from our panel. As I said, we had questions that we shared with them ahead based on what we've been hearing is important. Dating and discipline were the two. And dating, you know, it's an adventure. As you've heard me say, I raised my daughter for the first eight years by myself. And when I made a decision to start dating, it was after a, a, a lot of working on myself had to happen. I had to be in a place where it was good for me and that I was feeling ready to be out there and, and look for love, but you have to be ready and you know when it's good for you. And when it is good for you, that's when you'll find that you can strike the balance of dating and single parenting that works for you and your family and you will be a happier parent and a happier you. And this last one, moving past the guilt, you know, if someone asked me one of the things that I wish that I could have understood earlier, this probably would have been it. It's impossible to act as both parents, regardless of how hard you try, it's impossible. So you have to let go of things that you just simply can't do as a single parent. And instead think about the great things that you are able to do. So we asked you to think about again, what are the things that your, are your favorite things about being a single parent? And you shared that. Focus on that and leave behind this notion that life would just be easier or better with two parents. There are a lot of pros and cons to all family dynamics. And the one that you're providing your kids now is the only one that matters. It's the only one that, that they need. So focus on that and let go of the guilt or the shame or the stigma or whatever it might be that you are feeling as a single parent. 
move past that and focus on what you can provide your, your, your kids. So that's the 15. And I hope that these tips have been helpful. Again, like before, we're gonna bring up the poll and ask you to look at these five and identify the one that is really where you are today and that you need to work on going forward. So 11 is be consistent with discipline and rules. 12 is answer questions honestly. 13 is remembering to treat our kids like kids. 14, date when and how it's good for you. And 15, moving past the guilt. And thank you for voting and participating in the polls. I'll give you about five more seconds. Okay, Beth, we can share these. All right, so there were two that were pretty, that were the same, be consistent with discipline and rules and moving past the guilt. So out of that 15, again, the ones that, stood out for this audience is focus on self-care, find positive role models, accept help and plan ahead for emergencies, be consistent with discipline and rules and move past the guilt. We're going to ask if there are any questions at this point and thank you again for your participation in the polls and then we're looking forward to moving quickly to our panel. So if there are questions, we'll, you can type those in the chat and we will incorporate those into our panel discussion as we get started now. Thank you so much, Sherry, for sharing all those tips. Each one of those tips were very meaningful and powerful. Um, so thank you for that. And now we will transition to our panelists, our star panelists that I am super excited to have here today. Um, meet our panelists, which is Jessica Delazari and Diana Moreno. Thank you so much for participating today. And we will get to know them um, a little bit more. So um, Jessica Delazari, can you please tell, tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, I was like, can Diana go first, please? Because I feel like she has this energy that's going to like wake okay. us all up and pump us up. So Diana. Diana. <laughs> Whichever, is, it's fine. Diana or Jessica. Hello, everyone. Well, first of all, I'm just so thrilled to, that you are all here. And just like you, you know, I... I was in a toxic relationship that I uh, prayed to get out of most according to data, you know, most of us, it's just really challenging to get out of. Um, if you were like me, when I first um, had to realize that I was going to be a single parent, I, my headspace was just like going back and forth. You know, I was uh, relying on this person economically. I was scared to, um, like, how am I going to do it? What am I going to do? I remember when I first found out that I was a single parent, it was through a dream, actually. I, uh, I had a dream that, um, you know, he was uh, cheating on me. And um, when I confronted him, you know, just like most of these manipulative, um, you know, uh, kind of toxic behavior, they deny it. And so I remember, like, I panicked. My daughter was in, like a newborn, you know, because, you um, and I was weeping. And I remember when I was weeping in my room, um, my daughter was weeping as well. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I had to get it together. And I'm like, okay. So I remember like just praying, please, I just need a support group. I need resources. I need empowerment. And I, I remember like not sleeping that night and going on my phone and just searching. Who can I, like where in LA, where, where I am, can I go and find a resource. I ended up finding single mothers outreach. You bet. I immediately reached out to them. I think it took me like a month or a few weeks later for me to actually get into the, get into, um, you know, the office and fill out the paperwork. 
let me tell you, that was the best decision I ever made because psychologically, you know, emotionally, sociologically, we're going through a lot. There's a lot of things that in our, in our experience we're going through. So having a support system, having a dialogue to talk about these things, to express it and to also hear ourselves, you know, I did a lot of therapy. I'm still in therapy. You know, it, this happened to me in 2018. My daughter, um, was one. Now she's four going on five. And I've been independent since then financially, um, you know, economically just healing, uh, talking about it. And now I hope to be a voice for all of you to let you know that you either have a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. And let me explain to you what that means just really quickly. Um, so A growth mindset means that you believe the power of transformation. Um, I'm sorry if my internet is not doing so well. Goodness, um, can you can everyone hear me well? Okay. Um, and then the fixed mindset is if you're not, uh, means that you believe intelligence, it's fixed. So if you're not good at something, you might believe you'll never be good at it. And so I think it's starting with how you believe is very, very important. Yes, this happened to us. Okay, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to overcome? So I'm hoping that, you know, I want to give Jessica some time, but I'm hoping that this can, our voices, our experiences, hey, we're with you and you can get out of it. Okay. Yay. Thanks, Diana. I have a quick question for Sharice and Stephanie. So I have the questions I printed them out and I answered them do you want me to just read off of them and kind of or do you want me to introduce myself go ahead and please introduce yourself okay hi good morning ladies my name is Jessica Delazari I'm a single mom of two beautiful daughters and I am so glad to be here I have now found a new um like a new like place to be a part of you know I'm have been, I was a part of the single mothers outreach. Well, I mean, I am a part of the single mothers outreach community. And now I feel like now I have a new place to go to and I am so excited to be a part of this. And thank you for having both me and Diana. And yeah, that's a little bit about me. And I have some questions that I wanna answer and thank you ladies. And thank you, Di thank you Diana for that. that was Hi, Jessica. Yes. Yes, Hi, yes. And I do want to correct Jessica because I do see a man, a single dad here, and I think that's important to acknowledge. I don't want to have anyone feel uncomfortable because there are single parents that are both uh, genders. So thank you, everyone, um, just for being here. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. And, and Jessica. <laughs> um, so thank you for telling us a little bit about yourselves and the answering some of the questions that have happened in the chat. We know this is a community and we have to support each other. So what strategies have you developed for successful single parenting? And either of you can respond. Um, I'm looking down at my questions because I have been so busy. I, I answered these a few days ago. So one of the things I wrote down was letting go of the mentality of I can do this all on my own. This mindset pushed me pushed away much needed support in my early stages of single parenthood. And then I also wrote down once developing a perspective that successful single parenting includes support, guidance, resources, healing, therapy, and parenting classes. It was beneficial for not just me, but most importantly, my daughters. And then lastly, I put having a support system has helped me and it is still helping me during many obstacles as a single parent. And I actually have two more, but I really wanna say them because I think they're so important. Um, for some, a support system includes, a, um, includes family and friends. But for others like me, having college counselors, single mother outreach members, therapists, and nonprofit organization caseworkers were my support system. So please know that you're not alone. Sometimes all you have to do is just reach out and let them know you have no support and you have nobody and they can be there for you and guide you to a group or someone that can help you. And that's kind of how you can start creating your support system if you don't have any friends or any, fr or any family. 
Okay, I'll share now. Um, so this is a great question. And as I was, you know, reading your comments and stuff, some of the strategies that I have implemented in developing a successful single parent um, is finding the balance between self-care and playtime with my child. Now, playtime for me, my daughter is young. She's four years old. Her language is, her love language is like playtime. If you play with me, like she is satisfied. Now, I, just like you all, have a lot of responsibility and I, own, I do also get tired, um, but just trying to figure out what works for me is constantly day to day. Now, for me, bonding with my child, as I mentioned, is incredibly important. I strategically found a therapist as a resource to for myself and my daughter. So yes, I do have two therapists, okay? Um, and that's helped me tremendously deal with the opportunity to help her express her feelings. I also found online, there's a ton of free information online of just like, for instance, generational mindful or generation mindful is, uh, she's a psychologist who by herself did this business and is providing the tools for us to help our children express their feelings. I'm a communications major. The reason why I became that was because guess what? In my own home, we never really communicated and especially about our feelings. I'm here to try to raise an emotionally intelligent child. And at the same time, me become emotionally intelligent, right? So as I'm teaching my daughter, I'm also learning. So that role of teacher, you know, parent, being wise and, you know, we're here to guide our children. Yes, we do need to provide um, stability for them and all of that, but you, you, we need to really be honest with our children. Hey, I'm here to guide you. I'm not here to make you look cool or be cool. You need to have the tools to survive here. We are living in this world. And when you talk like Cherise said straight up, you have to, you, especially with these teenagers, talk to them straight up, you know, and if they need to go volunteer and go uh, really see volunteer for people that are really homeless, do it. Give them that experience, okay? One of the tips I do want to give you besides the generational mindful that you can look up is the is praising them. So there's a strategic called pride, okay? It's, pride stands for praise. I praise my daughter. I Like, for example, I tell her, I like the way you're playing so gently. Like right now, she's been up for an hour and she knows that I'm doing this. I praise her. You're doing really good. After this, we're going to do something great. We're going to spend five minutes. Now, Mark, I know that you mentioned you wanted to have some playtime with your child. Guess what, y'all? If you give them five minutes, this is all I'm doing with my therapist. I give my daughter five minutes. I put everything down, everything away, and I play with her, whether it's uh, board games, whether it's coloring, whether it's... Um, uh, hide and seek five minutes. Okay. Obviously if they're older, a little bit more, but five minutes, it's enough for me. This is what works for me. And I do those uh, pride. I, I praise, I reflect, I say, wow, you did that all by yourself. You know, obviously I'm talking to my four-year-old. You got, you all have teenagers. That's going to be a different strategy, but still like be intimate with them, describe what they're doing, H have them be, feel heard, you know, pay attention to your children. That's all they need and enjoy yourselves. Listen, at the end of the day, we all have stress, but for those five focus minutes, be childlike be with them participate enjoy your time with your children that's my those are my tips thank you so much diana for sharing and jessica um, we super appreciate the transparency that you both um have with us here today um and i know with this pandemic it has been extremely challenging for single parents and uh, researcher states that it has been extremely more challenging for single moms, right? Having to care for their children, being at home, having to be um, a full-time parent and some, you know, employ employments have been, you know, closed and moms are still, moms and single parents are still trying to manage and figure out how do we do this whole transitioning, um, you know, being teachers and all the roles that we have to fulfill, right? So I would like to ask you both, um, how have you managed this during, um, pandemic like how have you managed life um how do you handle discipline during the pandemic boundaries daily activities like how do you you know time management and then fulfilling all these areas that we have to fulfill as as single parents okay i'll go first is that okay jessica yeah all right so what works best for me is to inform my daughter what i'm doing that day i don't have a set schedule i i tried but it just doesn't work for me 
every day changes. There's some days that are longer. I'm like on Zoom meetings until late at night. So when I pick her, she does go to school. I, I struggle to find a school, but what I do is you guys, I reach out. I, I, you know, I'm a student myself. So my, my school is like my work, my job. So I ask, you know, um, my counselors, my therapists for resources. I reach out to single moms outreach, um, you know, and so what I do is when I pick her up from school, luckily she's going, um, that gives me free time. So if you can find a school, I know right now with pandemic schools are closed, you know, depending on the age group. So, but what works for me is just telling my daughter, okay, listen, um, when I pick you up, you're going to have dinner. After dinner, you're going to take a shower. After the shower, I have a meeting. I need you to either play on your ABC mouse or um, color or just watch a tablet. You know, as a single parent, a lot of times we rely on those tablets. Now with teenagers, that's tough because you don't know what they're watching. So, but I can't talk about that because I don't have a teenager. So I don't have experience. I can only talk about what I experienced with my daughter. Um, so yeah, that's what I do with her. I just, excuse me, Maya, I'm, having a conversation and you're being a little loud. Okay, can you please keep your, uh, keep it low? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a prime example. You know, you just, oh, another thing is telling your children what you want them to do. So I didn't tell her, you know, I, so like for instance, right now, just lower your voice. You know, I didn't tell her to be quiet or, or shut her mouth or anything like that. Just lower your voice. I'm on a meeting, you know, or like if she's jumping around, like all energized and stuff, it's like, okay, please sit down on the couch, the couch. We're not at a park. We're inside the home, you know, and just teaching them. We listen, we have to teach them. So anyway, I feel like I'm talking too much, but hopefully that helps. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Diana. I love that you're so like well-spoken and prepared to answer that question because I wrote it down <laughs> and I really appreciate your experience because I'm sure so many other moms and dads here can relate to you. I wrote something more, um, my life is a little bit different because I have two daughters and I do have to have a set structured schedule because my daughter does go to school online and she's in, only in second grade and we have to have a consistent schedule. Unfortunately, um, that means that all, like Diana, I'm also a full-time student, it means that all of my meetings have to be postponed or I'm, a lot of the times I just can't even um, get to them, I have to cancel them because I have to put my daughter's needs first. Um, so what has worked for me is having a structured routine and it, it has helped my family because my children do best with a consistent routine and a consistent nighttime routine with their sleep schedule. Um, during the beginning of the pandemic, that was really challenging for us. Uh, my daughters were going to sleep super late because I thought, okay, they can just stay up late watching something on Netflix and I'm just trying to do homework and it just didn't work out for us. Then we would want to sleep in in the morning and then we're just not in the best mood and we can't be productive like that. So I had to come up with a routine that worked for my family um, because every, everybody's different. So this is what worked for me. And then what has worked for me and I have, it's like a little self-care routine I have for myself. It's waking up about an hour or 30 minutes before my daughters wake up. For me, I love getting ready. I'm super girly. So I like doing my makeup and having my coffee and watching like a little YouTube video before my daughters wake up. So I can, you know, be prepared for them and be happy. You know, that's a little self-care for me. Everybody does it differently, but that's what's worked for me. And um, I'm planning our day, our week, I, um, I meal prep and I like to write everything down. I have three calendars and just being organized. So I hope that makes sense. And that's what works for my family. That absolutely makes sense. And thank you both so much for sharing that. You know, it's, it's great to hear both ways in which you're able to, to manage things during the pandemic, but just in general, and I love that Diana said, you know, tell your kids what you want them to do. Just be plain English, tell them what you need them to do. It's perfect. And, and your routines, you both have routines. One, a little daily routine, like telling your daughter, Diana, every day, what we're going to do today, that's a routine. And that builds stability. She knows what to expect. And Jessica, you're again, having structure ways in which you organize this is great it helps to set those boundaries thank you both so here's the question here's that big we talked about some discipline in the last one but here's the the other big d dating um what has worked for you when it comes to dating 
Dun, dun, dun. Okay, <laughs> let me find this because I wrote this down. I know this is a very controversial topic. It's taboo. It's everybody has their own perspective on it. And that is completely fine and valid. I saw a few um, comments on the chat box and that's okay. People have their own experience. Here we have Sharice's beautiful story that she was once a single mom and then able to find a wonderful man and get married to him and it's working out for her but for some women and for some men that just does not work out for them for the time being but that doesn't mean in the future it can happen and it can be successful and a great experience um so i have my notes all over the place i am sorry but i did write something for this let me find it um what has worked okay i have it right here Okay, um, so one of the first things I wrote was that for me, when it comes to dating as a single parent, therapy. Therapy has helped me when it comes to dating as a single parent by healing first and understanding that my children come first, weighing out the reality versus the fairy tale. I have no time to waste, especially with dating. In the past, I was unavailable to wasting my time and dating because my life has always been dedicated to my daughters, my future, my college and work, and just my busy life in general as a single parent. It was impossible to, to fit dating into that. Um, another thing I put down was knowing what I want. So right now, well, what I wanted was a long-term relationship with a partner with similar core beliefs. So for me, that's completely different from somebody else. So writing down what I want and speaking to a therapist and, you know, um, in the past, what has, you know, seeing what did not work for me with my ex-husband and why that didn't work out. I don't want to repeat that. And just knowing what, I, I hope that makes sense, you know, writing down what you want. That can be very helpful too. Um, I have, so here's a, a bit of ex, like what, what I've experienced. So I have met uh, men who are willing to date me as a single mom and they're wonderful men. I have met men who are not interested in dating me because I am a single mom and that's okay. I'm okay with that. I have, and this is a little controversial, but I just thought that it's important to bring this up. I have met men who are honest with me and that they just want, you know, to have a hookup or, you know, a type of relationship like that. And you know what? Thank you for your honesty. That's what I told them, but I'm not looking for that. And, you know, we can just appreciate honesty and we don't want to waste our time here. Day, and I have two more, so sorry, please bear with me. I put um, dating with a purpose and being realistic. So what do I mean by that? I meant, what I mean is if you're dating because you want a serious long-term relationship, being intentional with yourself and with that person can help navigate a dating scene and situation. Just being honest too. And last, th last thing that I put is that remember that your children come first and not a man, not a woman, or whatever you're interested in. So that's yeah. what I wrote down. And that's just my experience and my personal opinion. And I am aware that everybody else is different. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. That is beautiful. Diana, anything to add? I know we're seeing some conversation in the chat too. And I love that you said we pick our experiences. Yeah, of course, I want to add something. Um, so as Jessica mentioned, she gave a lot of great tips. I think one and foremost for me personally, um, I'm still learning to love myself. I think, you know, in order for me to be in a successful relationship, um, I'm like you mentioned, Sharice, in your conversation, we need, an, we know when we're ready. I'm definitely not ready. Um, I know that when I went to my therapist and that came up, I wanted, I know that some of you in the chat, I needed to trust myself and to trust the world and trust other people because of my experience. So I had to heal from that first. So it, you have to really analyze and, and be real with where you're at. Um, also, some of you mentioned, and this is one of my biggest fears, and that's why I want to have a dialogue about it, that, um, you know, my, young, my daughter is really young. I didn't put her in school until she was two when I taught her to speak for that same reason, because you don't know how other people are going to treat them. And to bring, you know, another person into your life. I mean, the, the possibility, we got to be real of, you know, that some of you mentioned in the chat, mol molestation and all that, that does come to my mind. So for me, that's why I put my child first. I'm not trying to, you know, um, 
so let me tell you what, where I'm at with that. You know, I am, um, not interested in dating. Like I mentioned, it's only been two years since I became a single parent. So I'm still working on myself first. My goal is to solely depend on me financially, emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. So for me, I'm barely learning to balance my life. I'm learning how to get my light back. And so I don't want to get distracted from my goals of having my bachelor's and my career and going into my master's. When you go to school, you, it is tough. Like you don't have time to, you know, for me, you know, um, be in a relationship. It's a lot of work. And so, and, um, you know, I also became a Christian last year in January of 2020. Um, my faith into the Santa Clarita church of Christ, um, has helped me. So right now, guess what? My relationship is with God. I'm learning to trust him. I'm learning to, um, have him be my man. So when I dress up, I dress for God. When I wake up in the morning, it's for God. He is my partner. He's my everything. And so, um, faith has really helped me thrive in this topic of dating. And I know that with his, he knows what he wants for all of us or she, whatever, however your beliefs are, but God knows better than we do. And as I'm studying intellectually the Bible and I'm reading it, I'm learning more about the beauty of it, of, of, of him and how I could have a good life despite all the turmoil and all the experience I had, but it's only through my faith. So I think it's important to be mindful of again, who you bring close to your, your kids, you know? Um, and that's what I have to say about that. Thank you. That's a lot. That was perfect. And thank you for your passion and honesty and really getting to the place of knowing where you are, loving yourself. And I love getting your light back, get that light back. Wonderful. Um, we are about four minutes from where we are supposed to be wrapping up. So maybe we'll do one more question. Is that okay, Beth? And then we will. Whatever you guys feel comfortable with. If people have more questions, you know, you're more than welcome to extend. Okay. All right. Um, Stephanie, do you want to ask the closing question? We, yes. We so, about five. Why don't you do six? Six. Okay. Um, so as we all know, right, no one prepared us to become a single parent. There is no right or wrong answer. There's no book, you know, before telling us this is the guide, this is how to guide us, you know. Um, so I would like to ask, what do you wish someone would have told you um, about being a single parent? Um, if you could just please share. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> What's the question again? Sorry. Uh, it's what? The question is, um, what do you wish someone would have told you about um, single parenting or, you know, something that you wish, you know, someone would have told you, um, okay. encouraged Got you it. or anything like that? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you I for that question. Oh. Diana has so much wisdom and ending it. She's just so positive and she's such an amazing speaker. So I just have like three questions that I wrote and then I really love, she just has such an amazing impact just on me. I can only imagine the audience. So Diana, let me go first and then you're going to take it from here. Okay, girl. Okay. So let me see. Okay. So for me, this is what I wrote. I put that I would be okay. Everybody around me kept reminding me, oh my goodness, this is so difficult. You're, you're a single mom with two kids. Wow. You know, make, and I just kept saying like, what? imagine being so negative and giving me such like a horrible perspective on what I'm about to get into. Like I already just left a domestic violence situation that I was in. I started all over again. I literally was homeless had no money, I had no car, I had nothing. I didn't need the constant reminders of what I was getting, my, what I was getting myself into. And I hope that makes sense. Um, everybody also kept telling me, you must be so lonely now, now that you're a single mom. You know, how are you going, going about it without you know, your ex-husband? And I just never liked that. And it always, you know, I learned from that to never be that way. Whenever I see somebody going through anything in life, any type of challenging experience, whether or not it's somebody becoming a new single mom or somebody broke their arm or somebody lost their purse. 
the last thing you need to do is question why are they going through this and just be supporting and just listen and be there for them. That's what I've learned from that. And to answer that question to the people who asked me, aren't you lonely? Family and friends and strangers at group therapy. And I would say, I'm not lonely. I was never lonely. I had my two daughters with me. They, I never felt lo lonely during this process. Again, this is my experience. Just want to put, make that, put that out there. And um, lastly, um, I was working on establishing my entire life all over again, which is still challenging, but I am not alone. And the hard work is really paying off. I already completed two years of college in the four years of being a single mom, from homelessness to having a roof over my head, to being carless, to having a car. I was able to do this with positivity, support, and a resilient heart. And that's all I have to say. And I actually have one more thing to say, and it's actually just really quick, just so we all can feel, I want you all to know something. Yesterday, and this is just a challenge of being a single mom. I am, yesterday I stayed up till 12 doing homework. I was just so busy. That's the norm for, you know, I'm a junior and I just have so much work, my daughter, taking care of my daughters. And um, I just wanted to share this because so many women in the chat, I'm saying women because I didn't see Mark say anything. So we're just, we're talking about, you know, the court system and child custody and all of that. And this is real life. Um, Yesterday, I was actually served by my ex-husband for custody. And just to make it, you know, so real and raw, so we all can feel like, you know, I want you to know that, yes, I, I'm here happy and I'm telling you I, I'm okay and I am answering these questions for you, but I'm going through the real reality of a single parent. I don't have money for an attorney and I'm, I'm scared. Um, I, the courts, I have a horrible traumatizing experience with the family courts and social workers and I've, I feel so alone with that, but I'm so glad to have been a part of this group today because it has encouraged me and, you know, I feel support and empowered and yesterday I was so sad and my, literally my heart was hurting, I was shaking, I, I was going through so much and then coming here with everybody just showing so much support, love, and a, creating a safe space for me. You, thank you so much for that. And I just wanted to end it with that. And thank you for having me today. Thank you so much, Jessica. And thank you for sharing, you know, you're going to be okay. And I know you said you wish someone would have told you that. I'm telling you, you're going to be okay. You're going to be beyond okay. You're going to be great, amazing. And we're all going to learn from you. So you will be okay. Thank you Diana. so much. Yes, definitely, Jessica. You are most likely going to be okay. And that's my message too to all of you that guess what? We will, we are going to thrive. If you want it, you will. If you don't want to get out of your situation, if you want to be miserable, you're going to be that too. So you have the power to decide. Ain't nobody stopping you from be, living your best life. And so that's what you know. I want to tell you. I wish someone told me that I can do it, that I can feel the fear and do it anyway. That especially during those moments in time, and I might get emotional, y'all, because I'm an emotional person. And it doesn't mean that, that we're not in pain that we're not hurt that we're not scared but it means that we can get we can feel that and move through it okay it means that yes we love our kids so much and that we might think you know what we screwed them up because they don't have a second parent in the home and you know what that's not true that is not true because i have interviewed young people teenagers i have interviewed people that have grown up in single parent households and i've asked them how are you doing today and they're fine without their parent or mother. They are perfectly fine. So just know that you, all we can do is our best. When I was overwhelmed, I remember one of my directors in school said, Diana, all you can do is your best every day. If you are authentically doing your best every day, you know, acknowledging everything, those 15 steps that Cherise gave you, those tips, if you're doing your best every day, that's all we can do. And our kids are going to respect that in the end. You know, so, um, you know, when you're, when you're in those moments of, should I get back? I'm not going to do it, whatever. Yes, you can. If you psychologically just say that, you know, that Nike stripe, yes, you can do it. That's why it's so popular. That's why, because it works when I couldn't do something, I'm like, yes, I can. 
I would tell myself, I can do it, I can do it. And I would just repeat that over and over and over. You know, yes, my house is a mess, but guess what? Yesterday I started cleaning it. I started cleaning out my car. It took me months, but you know, I'm doing my best. So don't judge yourself either, you know, and know that you are, you are loved, you know, you are amazing people, you know, and you can triumph. You can transform your lives. Just think about it. Find your resources at, you know, all of this that was given to you, you have to like piece it together and create your own manifestation, your own reality. This is a lot of gold nuggets. So put the pieces together. You are the creator of your life. Figure out what works for you and what didn't work for you. Don't use it. Let it go. And I hope that today, you know, you all inspire me. You will all inspire me. And I hope that, you know, you will get out of it. And I absolutely, I have so much love and I love you all. And I hope that you learn to love yourselves and let's go out there and kick some butt and raise some amazing, intelligent people and heal and break right. those cycles. Yes, amazing. Thank you so much. So powerful today, ladies. Thank you. So this has been awesome. Um, I had to go off camera moment because it is an emotional topic and had to clean up my face and get back ready. Um, Jessica, Diana, Stephanie, you're all amazing. And Phyllis and Beth, thank you for giving us the space to have this opportunity to have this needed conversation, this meaningful conversation, this timely and relevant conversation that can hopefully make a difference for someone who is participating, listening. Um, I know that on Facebook, I saw there are people from around the world watching right now. Wow, so powerful. Someone is being inspired by what was shared here today. And we are so grateful to have this space. It's not easy to be a single parent, but you can do it and you can be successful just as the title of this session says. And we had some homework for you. Um, and I'm going to bring up the screen and, and we're gonna make it homework, Stephanie, so. Okay, definitely. Um, and I want you to just, while completing this homework assignment, I want you to take a space you know, wherever you are and just reflect on today, reflect and just utilize that reflection to empower yourself. Um, you know, play some meditation music, some relaxation music, any music that keeps you calm or you go outside and take a walk and, um, you know, just, just, just do this reflection activity um, that we had for today. Yeah, we want you to just think about what you can pick, all the nuggets the 15 tips, the amazing panel discussion with Diana and Jessica and choose to make a decision today, choose to act and decide what you're gonna do different in the next 30 days based on everything that you've heard. And with that, you know, we, we will take maybe two or three questions and then Beth, we will be finishing our time together today. And we wanna thank you again for sharing this morning with us, for being vulnerable. Thank you, Diana, Jessica, for, for really putting yourself out there and being willing to be vulnerable in this moment. It's so truly appreciated. I feel empowered. I know that the world is a better place because of the things that you share today and your experiences. So I don't see any questions. The homework slide, yes, I will go back to the homework slide. And there are some resources here too, and we'll put those in the chat for you before we finish, but going back to the homework slide. Thank you so much. Stephanie, thank you for sharing your email. And yes. please feel free to go visit our website at Single Mothers Outreach. And um, we have 
workshops, classes, um, and our goal is to empower, um, you know, to empower families and their children. I mean, if you have any questions, please email me or visit our website. And you all, they do empower you. They have, you know, everything that they spoke about, this is your, this is your team. I would highly suggest, even if you're a man, look them up. I'm sure they accept single parents. It should be called single parents outreach. <laughs> Thank you so much, Diana. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again for being here with us today. And we will put the, some of these resources in the chat for you. And we just appreciate you. Thank you. And we'll stick around for a few minutes if there are any yes. Last questions. questions. And I know Beth and Phyllis will close us out. I do quickly want to mention to Mark, Mark, if you're a student, um, there's a lot of resources for student parents and especially with uh, a child that you mentioned um, that needs extra support. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of resources, Mark. So you're going to be fine as long as you reach out to those resources. Phyllis, did you want to finish today with our next workshop? Yes, I, I just wanted to say what, what a great workshop this has been. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of some comments I saw on chat, I wanted to clarify that Zanta's mission is to empower women worldwide. However, our workshops, men are welcome to all of our workshops. Our next workshop scheduled for Saturday, April the 24th. And that's going to kind of follow along with things heard today. It's going to be on family law, divorce and custody issues and will be presented by Denise Light Esquire with the DeCorsio Placentio, DeCorsi DePlentio Law Firm. She is a super lawyer since 2013. She will be presenting uh, and talking about divorce, spousal support and modification, child custody and modification, and child support. And everyone that has attended a workshop since 2012 is on our mailing list and will receive a notification to register when the flyer is released. At that time, if you know of anyone that this workshop might help, please let them know. Also, as Beth indicated earlier, you will be receiving a brief survey when you log off. So please take a few minutes to answer that as that's, that helps us be able to meet the needs of our, our uh, audience. So thank you so much for joining us in this wonderful workshop today. Thank you guys. We're gonna finish recording now. Um, we're not actually emailing it out. It's in the chat for the survey.